Hey guys and welcome to another very exciting creeper. Oh man! Oh! Ugh. Well, now with that out of the way, let's talk about how you can create your very own particle effects. Anything from pixel explosions to smoke, fire, fireworks, energy beams, sci-fi effects, flowers, motion graphic backgrounds. Super easy and quick and most importantly absolutely free using the standalone application of Particle Illusion from Boris FX. Particle Illusion is a powerful particle and motion graphics generator and I'm really excited to be able to share with you all that the standalone version of Particle Illusion as well as the Particle Emitter library which contains thousands of great looking presets is now free for you guys to just download and use in any way that you want and you'll find all of the relevant links down in the video description. Now, as always, full frontal disclaimer, this video is sponsored by Boris FX. I really like using their products and I really enjoy working with their team. Boris FX, in case you don't know, are the creators of the Academy Award winning Planar Tracker Mocha, which is by the way integrated into the premium version of Particle Illusion, but they also offer the massive Continuum Complete and Sapphire Effects collections. Go and check out all of the cool stuff that they have on their website. And if you do decide to make a purchase in the end, you can also use my custom coupon code Surfaced Studio in one word to knock 15% off that final price. But now let's check out how you can get the free version of Particle Illusion and how you can use it to create your very own particle effects. To grab the free version of Particle Illusion, simply head over to borisfx.com and then under products, you will find a link to Particle Illusion. As I said, the standalone application of Particle Illusion is absolutely free, so simply hit that giant download button and then you will find installers for both Mac OS and for Windows. Now, in order to download these installers, you will have to sign into BorisFX and you can either use an existing login or just sign up for a free account. As I said, it won't cost you a cent. And once you've signed in, you can download the file and install Particle Illusion on your machine. In order to also grab the free emitter library, simply come up into support and hit downloads. Under the product dropdown, simply select Particle Illusion Particle Emitters, download the emitters and install it on your machine as well. As I said, it includes thousands of free presets. And once you're set up, let's launch Particle Illusion and actually check out how you can use the tool. Hopefully you've already installed the free emitter library, so let's simply click away this pop-up. And this is the interface for Particle Illusion. It is divided into four panels. On the left-hand side, you will find the preset browser, where you can browse all of the thousands of presets available in Particle Illusion. In the middle, you'll find the properties panel, where you'll find the properties for all of the emitters you have on your stage. You can customize the look and feel, their behavior, as well as keyframe their properties. Over on the right hand side, you will find the preview panel where you can see all of the emitters and the look of your final particle effect on the stage, as they call it. Below that, you have a timeline where you can just click and scrub through playback controls and then controls to manage keyframes in your scene. But before we get into any of that, let's just come into our view and go to project settings and make sure we're properly configured. Here you can define the dimensions, frame rate and duration of your project. You'll find a bunch of presets in here, but I just want to make sure that I'm in 1920 by 1080, so 1080p. Frame rate, I'm going to set to 24. My duration, maybe I'll make that 240 frames, so that's 10 seconds long. You can enable and disable motion blur here as well, but we can do that later on, so I'm just going to leave this off for now. Mip map settings, which is how Particle Illusion will deal with the bitmap textures for the particles. I'm just going to leave at use particle settings. Let's hit apply. And right now our stage is empty. If you click and drag on the timeline or you play this back, there's nothing on here right now. So we now need to go through all of these emitters and pick some that we like and add them to our stage. Now, in order to make that easier, Particle Illusion actually includes a number of different layouts. These are accessible under the view menu. So the default layout, which is what we're looking at right now, shortcut for that control and one or command and one if you're on a Mac, edit layout, the create layout and the browse. Right now, I don't really know what I wanna pick. So let's go to the browse layout and that'll divide our screen into two parts. At the bottom, you have the preset browser itself and you can just mouse wheel scrub through this. And let me just make this a little bit smaller as well, just so you get a sense for the scale and the sheer number of presets that are available in Particle Illusion. It's a huge amount. And at the top, you now have the preset panel. So what you can do is you can simply select a preset at the bottom that should get previewed at the top. You can also just click to reposition that emitter. You can also click and drag to move the emitter around. Now with this particular preset, that doesn't make too much of a difference, but if you select any of the trail presets and you click and drag, 
You can kind of see what that would look like if you were to animate the emitter. You can also mouse wheel in and out to zoom in and out at the top. So let's just find something that we like and I'm kind of feeling, I kind of feel like I want something fairy-ish. Ooh, these ones are actually really nice. They look really pretty. And again, you can click and drag to kind of get a feeling for what would that look like if you were to animate this emitter. That's actually a pretty nice effect. I kind of like this one, but I think I prefer TH Fairy 3 because just there's just a little bit more going on. And again, if you click and drag, you kind of get a feeling for what this effect looks like. So yeah, I think I'm happy with this one. So let's come back to view and let's return to the default layout. And you can see my effect is still selected. Now I can't see it here on the left, but let's just return to the grid view here. And maybe at the top, I'm just gonna search for fairy to filter this down. And here's our effect selected. And I can now add this to my stage simply by double clicking on it. So that now added this emitter onto our stage. Do note that whenever you add an emitter to the stage, it will get added at your current time position. So we were here, the little blue indicator was at the beginning of our timeline. So that's where we started adding this effect. Let me just make these panels on the left just a little bit smaller. And if we now rewind and play this back. Cool, here's our initial particle effect. Now you can add as many emitters as you want to your stage and at any point in time. So let's say, let's go about a second or so in and let's say at this point, I want some other particles to spawn on my scene. So maybe this, this fairy glitter here. And let's say I wanna place it underneath. So let's double click onto this effect to add it to our stage. You can actually just click and drag to move this emitter around. I'm just gonna place it a little bit lower, maybe around about there. And you will notice that this effect actually, can you see the indicator here for start frame? So this effect, this fairy glitter fog, actually only starts at one second in, so right there. Whereas if I select the TH fairy of three emitter, that starts at the very beginning. You can actually reposition these to start them at different points in time as well. But if you rewind and just play this back. Cool, so that's our current fairy effect. What I might actually do, I might actually select this fairy glitter, move this emitter up a little bit and start it a little bit earlier as well. And you can actually grab these corners as well and just reshape and resize that. Under the properties in the properties window as well for this fairy glitter fog, let's pop this open, you can actually change the shape of these emitters from areas to points to lines to lips to circle. So there's a whole bunch of stuff to deal with and we're gonna dig into some of these in just a little bit. Let's just rewind and play this back one more time. Cool, that's a pretty magical effect. Now the cool thing with particle illusion is that all of these particles are actually being rendered on transparent. And I can come up here in the top of the preview panel and change this preview on composite over checkerboard. And you can see that all of these particles are actually rendered out on a transparent background, which means that if I turn this into an actual video file, I can then take this video file into any video editing program from Premiere Pro, Sony Vegas, After Effects, DaVinci Resolve, HitFilm, iMovie, anything at all, and layer it on top of my videos. So I can easily create some really cool effects and add them to my videos really, really easily. But I prefer previewing them on black. It's just a bit easier to see what's going on. But let's just leave this fairy glitter fog, the one at the bottom here, in place. Let's just collapse that. By the way, if you just wanna preview individual effects, you can actually click on this hamburger menu and you can disable emitters or duplicate them or delete them. So I can disable this fairy glitter fog for now. It just won't render for the time being, but it is still on our stage. So this TH fairy three, let's pop open the properties. I don't actually like that it's an area effect. Now you can create some really cool effects. Let's just say I wanna have a whole bunch of these fairies spawn. That's pretty nice, but I imagine it more all coming from like one spot and that spot moving around. So it's kind of like a trail of fairies being spawned. For that, I'm going to change the properties for this TH Fairy or three effect. By the way, you can actually rename all of these ones. So let's just actually rename this layer to Fairy Trail. It does make it a little bit easier, especially if you add a lot of emitters onto your stage. Let's change the shape from area to point. So now these fairies are actually just going to be emitting from this one point here, which might seem a little bit boring, but let's animate the position of this emitter. So let's just say, I wanna start maybe around about here and let's select the position property. And you have multiple ways of adding keyframes to create animation. Let's make sure we're at the beginning of our timeline. And I can either with this little keyframe menu here, now add a linear or bezier keyframe, or I can simply hit the plus button with the key down here to insert a keyframe on the currently selected property. So let's just add that. Let's move forward about a second. 
We want to take this emitter and drag it over to the left hand side here and you can see it's creating this line. It's creating this movement because it's inserting another keyframe on my position property. So now my emitter is moving at two seconds. I'm going to move it over to the right hand side. And by the way, you can actually drag the keyframes around as well. So just make sure you cling onto the timeline indicator if that's what you want to move. Let's move that over to the left. And again, let's come to about four seconds and move that over to the right. And you can actually see what's now happening. Let's rewind and play this back. Now the fairies finish emitting pretty soon because after about a second, this emitter actually stops emitting new fairies. And you can actually see the red boxes around any of these properties means they're animated already. We've now animated the position, but the number was already animated. And if you select that property, you can see down here, there's two keyframes, one at the very start with a value of 144. And then if you jump to the next keyframe, you can, by the way, here have these buttons for jump to the next keyframe set to zero at about one second. I don't actually want to trail it out quite that quickly. I want this emitter to keep emitting fairies up until four seconds, up until it hits the very end of its path. So I'm just going to grab this end keyframe and move it forward to four seconds. And now this emitter is going to keep emitting fairies from the very beginning all the way up until it hits four seconds. Now, rendering will get a little bit slower as you go further into this animation because, well, even though it's GPU accelerated, thousands and thousands of particles, and right now we have about 12,000 on the stage, may make your computer a little bit slower depending on your specifications. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I actually don't want tons of fairies to spawn at the very beginning, so I'm going to move this keyframe in a little bit. And I'm going to add a new keyframe at the very beginning. Again, I can either press plus or just change the number, and I'm going to change this to zero. So again, down here, you can see the graph. You can actually click and drag these around as well if you wanted to, just to make it a bit easier to control the flow of your keyframes. So it's going to start with nothing. Fairies are going to start spawning. Then tons of them are going to get spawned. And then towards the end, it kind of just fades out again. Let's rewind and play this back. Cool, that looks really nice. Now the animation of the meter is a little bit static, so let's quickly fix that up. With the position property selected, if you click on this little keyframe menu here, the interpolation is set to linear. Now let's change this to Bezier. Make sure you're actually on that first keyframe, so let's change that to Bezier, and you'll get a little Bezier handle that you can click and drag to kind of define the curve, the movement of that interpolation, and you can get very organic results with that but it only affected the first keyframe. So let's jump to the next keyframe and it doesn't do anything because I don't have my position property selected. So let's jump to the next keyframe. Again, let's change that over to be a Bezier. And this time I get two handles. I can just adjust how I want that to move. Let's jump to the next keyframe. And again, change that over to Bezier and adjust that. Jump to the next keyframe, turn that into a Bezier as well. And maybe at the end, I'll do that as well. So now if we rewind and play this back, you get this really nice and organic looking fairy spawning effect. Now, particle illusion includes tons of properties with every single particle emitter. There's life, the number, the size of the particles, their velocity, their weight, which controls how much they're being affected by gravity and forces, spinning, bouncing, zooming, opacity control. And the fairy trail here is actually just the emitter. Under each emitter, you'll find settings for the particles themselves. So this fairy trail emitter emits particles called TH fairy 01. You can pop that open. And in here, you will find tons of additional properties. Now, this emitter is actually what's called a super emitter. A super emitter essentially emits other emitters. And you can see that by all of the fairies that are being spawned from this main trail have their own little particle system going at their own little trails. You can also tell that this is a super emitter by all of these properties being prefixed with F dash. And then every super emitter again, because it's emitter has the actual particles. So there's a body, a fog, stars, wings, wing one particles. And again, you can pop all of these open and all of these have their own properties. And in here, you'll find the actual particle properties. And all of these are customizable, animatable. You can customize these emitters to the full extent of your imagination. And then once you're done, you can click on this hamburger menu and say, save to emitter library, and it'll add that as a preset into your own library. Now, I won't go through all of the details here. There's so much to dig into. If you want to see more tutorials, let me know in the comments down below. And also be sure to check out the BorisFX website where they have a ton of really in-depth tutorials on how to get the most out of Particle Illusion. I really just want to give you a little bit of a crash course here. Now, before we get to rendering this out and actually using it in our video project, one of the really fun things I wanted to quickly show you are deflectors and forces. 
So let's come to maybe at the very beginning and you'll notice it plays back quicker at the beginning because there's less particle in the scene. So maybe let's come to about a second in and let's add a deflector to our stage. So let's click on deflector and let's click into our stage. I'm going to add that maybe right here and maybe one over on the left hand side. Let's press escape. So we've just defined this line to be deflecting all the particles. Let's run and play this back. And you can see the fairies are being bounced off that deflector. And this is really useful if you want to create obstacles for walls or text or other things where you want particles to kind of interact with the elements in the video that you're going to composite these particles on. So that is super useful. Let's delete the deflector for now. Come back to about one second. And let's add a force into our scene. So again, let's click force. Let's click into our scene. I'm going to add one on the left side here. And forces essentially push your particles around. Forces can have different shapes or types. So there's an area, a grid or a point force. Let's just use this area. I'm going to drag to make this area a little bit bigger because this is the area of influence for this force. I'm going to push it over to the right hand side a little bit, but I'm going to make it a little bit more shallow just so the effect is a bit more noticeable. And we may have to play with the strength a little bit. I'm just going to pump it up to maybe around 200 or so. Let's rewind and play this back. And you can see how all of these particles are being swished and pushed over to the right hand side by the force. And you can add as many deflectors and forces as you want to your scene to kind of have all of the particles interact just the way that you want them. It's super fun and super easy to do. But now finally, let's talk about how you can actually render out this video and Particle Illusion has made this super simple. At the top of your stage, you will find a render button. So let's simply click render and this render dialog is going to pop up. Let's define where we want to output this file to. And then in here again, you'll have a bunch of different presets. If you want to render this video out with transparent background, which I imagine for the most part you want to because then you can layer it on top of your other video. Make sure that the format you select is something that supports an alpha channel as well as the codec. So I like to use ProRes 444 and then under the channels, make sure you select RGB plus alpha. I prefer going with pre-multiplied and make sure your frame rate is set. And again, here you can actually enable the motion blur again. And I do want to export this with motion blur just because motion blur makes the preview a little bit slower. I tend to leave it off until the very end. Then let's simply hit render and Particle Illusion is going to render this effect out into an actual video file. Once that's done in the video editing program of your choice, right here we're in Premiere Pro, I've got a little clip of Walter being a fairy and I've already imported the movie fairy MOV into this project. Simply drag and drop that on top of the video you want to lay it onto. And because it was rendered out on a transparent background, you can see it being layered on top very nicely right there. Now the effect doesn't quite match the video, but that's also because we had a little bit too much fun with that force. And I left that in for rendering so you can see the motion blur right here. But now you can essentially just position this effect over your video anywhere that you want. I want to change the blend mode over to screen as well so it blends in a bit softer, and maybe apply a glow effect. And that's all you need to do to create and add a custom particle effect to your videos using the free version of Particle Illusion from Boris FX. And that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to watch more, just click these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me, what I do on this channel, be sure to check out all of the links down in the video description. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I will see you later.